Hello everybody, welcome to The Art of Code. My name is Mark Tyne and this is the last part of the Drive Home tutorial where we will be tackling the rain on the windshield. Uh, if you haven't checked out any previous tutorials yet, be sure to start at part one, otherwise you don't know what's going on. Otherwise, let's get started. So this is where we left the last time uh, with all the lights, uh, the, all the lights functioning. And so what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to add the rain to the windshield. And the way I'm going to do that is I am going to change the UV coordinate that goes into the get ray function uh, and change it in such a way that it, uh, that it, is, um, uh, that it shows no distortion uh, until it hits a drop and then it distorts a little bit. Uh, because we can distort this UV coordinate to get a distorted image. And just to demonstrate that, I can say uv.x plus equals the sine of uv.y times some large number, uh, and then maybe times a smaller number to kind of show you that we can distort this. Uh, and that will come in handy if we want to distort with rain on the windshield. So what I'm going to do is I am going to make a function here that returns a vec2, and I'll call it rain, and as an input, it will take a UV coordinate, and it will take a time, and for now, and this will just give us the distortion. So for now, I'm just gonna return zero distortion, so that's a vec2 with zero for both X and Y. And then over here, uh, I can make a vec2 for my distortion. So vec2, let's call it rain distort equals rain uv comma t. And then over here, I just add my distortion to my normal uv. So I go plus rain distort. So now this shouldn't change anything. Um, okay, so I need to move my T declaration up a little bit farther over there and you see that doesn't change anything all right great so now that we have that uh, the best thing to do uh, while we're building this is to um, is to get rid of this image for a while and just look at the distortion itself so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna say call equals vec3 and I'm gonna Take my rain distort for my x and a y, for my x and my y, or my r and my g, my red and my green channel, and I'm gonna for the blue channel I'm just gonna have zero. So that's gonna get rid of my image, and it's gonna just show my distortion, which in this case is zero distortion. Therefore, I just see black. So now if we go here, now if I just want to show my UV, for instance, I can just do that, and it will show us the UV coordinates with zero zero over here and then over here uh, like one one or one point six one or whatever and over here it becomes negative right so now the first thing I want to do is I want to make lots of little boxes within each box I have one drop so for those little boxes I can take my UVs actually let's make another set of UV coordinates and I'll call them ST that's just another name, uh, uh, because I'm gonna I'm gonna screw around with this value st, but in the end, in the end, I also want to keep track of my uv as well. So that's why I do it like this. And uh, what I can do, let's let's multiply this by some larger number. So if I do that, and I just show the st, then you can see that it just goes from zero to one faster, and then after one, it doesn't really change anymore um, so now if I take the fractional component of that now I get a bunch of little boxes all right and now what I want to do with these drops is like the, there is going to be a drop and the drop is going to stick to the window and then and after a while it's going to slide down so uh, what I want is I want a box that is not square so I'm going to make a another variable called a for aspect ratio because I'm gonna 
make that box not square. So let's see what this does. And I'm just going to multiply that. So now it's going to scale more in one direction and in another direction. So as you can see, I get, well, I should take this 10 out here. Let me, let me just put it over here and multiply it by, let's say, 3 to make it a little bit smaller so we can see. So now you see we have a bunch of neat little boxes that, have, that can have a drop in them where the drop can fall. Um, but now my UVs, inside of the boxes, my UVs go from 0, 0 to 1, 1. And I don't want that. I, I want the box still to go from minus 0.5 to plus 0.5. So I'm just going to subtract 0.5. So now I have 0 in the middle and minus 0.5 over here and plus 0.5 over there. All right, so now we can start drawing a dot in the middle that's going to be like our main drop. So I can say float D for distance. So I'm going to check the distance of my, of my pixel to the center of the box. Okay, so that's just this the length of st and then I'm going to make a another variable called m1 for mask1 and I'm going to use my smooth step to um, to cut out a nice little disk with my d value and then over here let's see what this does um, Oh, not my D value, obviously. So, well, okay, so the D value will show you. Okay, so in the middle, uh, we're, we're very close to the, we're very close to the middle, therefore we're, we're like, we're, uh, D is small, therefore the color is dark. On the edge, uh, the, the distance is large, therefore the color is yellow in this case, because we're only um, feeding into the red and the green channel. So if you have one red, one green, zero, blue, then you get yellow. So that's why this is yellow um, but I don't want to show my D I want to show my M1 so now we have a bunch of dots great so now before I move on because before I could see where, where the edges of my box were but right now I can't so before I move on I'm gonna I'm gonna make something just for debugging just for so we can see what we're doing I'm gonna <coughs> draw the edges of each box so the way I'm doing that is I want to say, well, if my X component of my UV coordinate is larger than, uh, well, it went from minus 0.5 to 0.5. So I'm going to say, well, if it's larger than 0.46, uh, then M1 equals 1. So that should give me all vertical lines. So let me see. Oh, I should not forget a decimal dot over here. So that gives me my vertical lines. And I'm going to do the same thing for my horizontal line. So I'll say st.y larger than 0.49. And the reason why I do 0.46 and 0.49 is because uh, the box is stretched. So if I give these the same values, uh, then you will not see the vertical lines anymore because they're smaller than one pixel to the edge of the box. Anyways, this is just for um for debugging purposes so we can see what we're doing all right great so now one thing that i see right away is that my dots my drops are stretched and i want them to be round and the reason why they're stretched is because the box they're in is stretched so i have to account for that so what i can do for that is um is divide this by the aspect ratio again so that will bring this back to a round dot. Great. So now what I want is I want the dot to, because we're going to simulate um, we're going to simulate drops that stick to the window, then they slide down, and then they stick to the new spot, and then they slide down. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to move these drops. So I'm going to make a vec three, call it P one. For the position, and I'm gonna not a vec three, a vec two, sorry. And for the x, I'm gonna put it in the middle, which is zero. And for the y, I'm gonna make something. Okay, and then over here, I'm gonna do this. 
Okay, so now if I have my float y equals zero, nothing should change. Okay, nothing changes. If I put it at point one, you see now I can move this dot. All right, great. So now I'm gonna, let's say, I'm gonna use the sign of the time that I put into here. Okay, so um, I have to press play first of all, otherwise the time will not change. And now I press enter and now the thing disappears. And that is for two reasons. One, the t goes going really slow. So I'm, I'm gonna multiply the t by some larger number. And now you can see that the dot um, moves through the box, but it moves too far. And the reason why it moves too far is because this sign will go from minus one to plus one. Um, but my box goes from minus 0.5 to plus 0.5. So first of all, if I just multiply this by 0.5, now you see that it gets all the way to the edge, but that's still too much because it's still is cutting off. So, uh, and also let me perhaps make the box or make the dot a little bit smaller because it's fairly large, maybe even a little bit more. Okay, fine. So now uh, let me just stop it when it's at the edge here, there. And I just have to multiply this by some smaller number to get this to not uh, be cut off by the edge. So now it will go all the way to the edge. Uh, it still got cut off a little bit. So let me make it a little bit smaller. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, so um, what I want though is I, I want the drop to go down fast and go up slow and go down fast and go up slow and then it will become clear in a minute why why that is so to do that let's let's go to Desmos real quick and check the sine of X so the sine of X goes up goes down goes up goes down but it's symmetrical the way it goes up and goes down so, but what I want is I want a sawtooth wave. I want something that goes up slow and then goes down. Uh, so what I came up with is this. So uh, the, sign, this, the sine of x plus the sine of x already gives me a little bit of what I want, right? It goes up and then it goes down, but it goes down with this wave here, which I don't want. So what I would do for that is I just put another sine x inside of here and then I multiply this by and that gives me a nice little function that goes up quick and goes down slow. All right, so I'm going to use this in here. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing here. So sine of t plus sine of t times 0.5. Uh, is that correct? Yeah. All right, so now you can see it goes up quick and goes down slow. Okay, well, I want the opposite. I want to go down slow and go up. Uh, sorry, go down quick and go up slow. So I just do minus. All right. And now all I have to do is I have to offset this upwards motion uh, with an overall downwards motion of the entire grid in order to have the dots, uh, the drops not go up. They always go down, then they stay still, and then they go down and stay still. Um, so for that, I'm going to go uh, over here. I'm going to do my Y component of my UV coordinate, and I'm going to just add T to that. Um, what did I do wrong? Um, okay, obviously I have to do that before uh, like before the, the the fract operation. So what I'll do here is I say fact two st equals. I'm just gonna stick that in there and then replace that because I want to keep my UV the way the way it was in the beginning. So now here I can do st dot y plus equals time. Uh, and then obviously I don't have to redefine it over here. Okay, and now I have to play with this value so that it moves just in line with the, the, um, the upwards motion of the dot. So let's say 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 
So now you can see here, okay, it falls down, but then it still goes down, right, on the, on the upwards on the upwards phase, right? If I put my mouse cursor here, you see the drop will still go down. So I, I should go down a little bit slower. Now let's see what it does. Okay, so it drops down and then it drops down. And so this is kind of okay. Maybe we wanna look at, cause it looks like it bounces up a tiny little bit afterwards. So maybe we wanna go down a little bit faster, something like that. All right. So now that we have that, and so in, in the end, we'll, we'll see this obviously without this. And you, have, you, you kind of start getting the idea of where we're going with this. All right, so now the next thing I want is I want to have a trail of drops. So like when these drops fall, I want them to leave a trail of other drop, of smaller drops. So for that, I'm gonna go over here and I can uh, reuse my D variable here. So I'm going to do D equals length. And then I'm just, just going to put um, a bunch of a bunch of drops in there that are stationary, that don't move. So let me see here how I did that before. Um, ta -da -ta -ta -da -da -da. All right, so... Um, Let's see here. So if I just use my my original UV coordinate, let's see what that does first. So I'm going to do float m2 equals same same thing as this basically. So I'm going to stick that over there, and then over here I have to make sure that I'm showing my m1 and my m2, and so that makes another dot in the middle, which is what we would expect, right? Because we didn't do anything to the UV to the UVs. Um, so the next thing we can do here is to take the fractional component of that, because if you remember in the beginning, the UV is 0, 0 over here, and then it goes to 1, and then 2, 3, whatever. It, it, it just goes off, right? So if I, if I fract this, then I will get a bunch of dots. And uh, right now they're cut off here. Here, let me just show you the M1 by itself. Right now it's cut off because uh, uh, because my my circles at zero zero and after the fract my zero zero is in the corner so I have to uh, I have to shift that back over in order for these drops to show again let me just put this back uh, all right so now I have a bunch of dots here um, and now I have to play with this a little bit to to get these dots uh, in these columns so what I do here is uh, I will, well, first of all, like squeeze the entire grid down. Okay, so now I have a bunch of dots everywhere. Um, and now the next thing I want to do is, let's see here. Well, these dots are spaced out quite a bit, and I don't want them to be spaced out this much. I, I want them to be uh, in the... In the vertical direction, I want there to be twice as many as in the horizontal direction. So for that, I can just multiply this inside of the fract here by a vec2, where I say, okay, for the x component, multiply by 1, which means don't do anything. And for the y component, multiply by 2. And so that makes twice as many dots. And if I make these dots a little bit bigger, let's say over here, now you see though that my dots are all squished, so I have to um, I have to unsquish them by taking the same um, aspect ratio over here and putting brackets around this entire thing, uh, and then multiplying that again over here. I mean, not multiplying but dividing to undo the. Um, the distortion that I introduced over here. So now I have uh, the dots that I want. So now the next thing I want is obviously those trail dots should only be showing above above the main drop, not below the main drop. Well, that is fairly simple to do because we can make a mask that is one here and then below here it's zero. So 
the way to do that is um, I can just use a smooth step for that and then I can say okay well take minus 0.1 and 0.1 and now I can say okay because I have the original p1 here the original y position of my main drop so p1 dot y and I have the original uh, UV coordinate that I was compared with. So I can say minus st dot y. And, and now, so let's see what that does. Okay, so that does the opposite of what I want. Uh, so I just have to swap these two around. So minus p1 dot y. Okay, so now uh, anywhere uh, my my st dot y is larger than my p1 dot y uh, it, like this this will return one otherwise it will return zero okay uh, and so now the next thing I want to do is I want to scale these drops so that they they become smaller as they're farther away from this drop um, and for that I can take let's see here so I want to Let's actually put, push this to zero so that I have softer trail drops. And then over here, I have to multiply this value because this is, this is the diameter of the drop. And I have to multiply that by some, uh, some value that is dependent on where in the box we are. If we're all the way at the top, it should be multiplied by zero so that it's, uh, it disappears. So for that, I'm going to use the st.y. And remember, st.y goes from 0.5 to minus 0.5. So I have to add 0.5. Well, let's see what this does. OK, so this does exactly the opposite of what I want. Right now, my drops are, are super small at the bottom and not at the top. Um, so I can do 0.5 minus st.y. Let's see what that does. OK, so that. That seems to do what I want, but now the drops are a little bit small, so I can just multiply this by a larger number to account for that. Okay. All right, great. So now um, let's make the main drop soft as well. So my main drop over there. And now the other drops are a little bit too big, so let's make them a little bit smaller. Okay, so now you can tweak this uh, to your heart's content. And I said it before, like making shaders is uh, often uh, a lot, a lot of tweaking of the values to make everything perfect. Uh, but for now, let's just uh, let's just leave it this way. Okay, so now the next thing to do, and obviously, like right now, we have some sort of synchronized um, synchronized raindrops going on, which is obviously not very exciting. So. What we have to do next is to offset uh, each and every raindrop so it's so it's different. So the first thing I'm going to do is every column of raindrops I'm going to shift every column up and down a little bit. So for that I have to make an ID. I have to make a number that is uh, that is let's say one over here in this box and two in this box and three in this box but wherever like no matter where it is in the box for whatever pixel that that value is the same um, so for that what I'm what I'll do is I will make a um, I will use a fract or a floor for that so what I do fact two ID equals floor the floor of st and so that that number will be like one 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 and like two one three three one and then if you go up one and it's like three two and and so on and so forth so and now i'm going to use that value to offset my uh my y component here so um i can do plus id but i want I don't want to offset it by one or two or three. I want to offset it by some random value. So I'm going to use the X component and I'm going to make a pseudo random value out of this. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to multiply it by some larger number, stick it into a sign. So now it lands somewhere on a sine wave. And now I'm going to multiply that by some larger number. Um, 
and now I'm going to take the fractional component of that, and that will give me a pseudo random number between 0 and 1. So let's see what that does. Okay, so that um, offsets my each of my boxes and and this you can you, you can play around with this to see if different numbers give you a more random look because essentially what we're, what we're doing here is we're still applying like a sine wave offset to everything so sometimes you 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 will be able to see that uh, and so if you if you can't see it then you can just play with these numbers until you can't all right so that already makes things better uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that they don't these drops don't all fall exactly at the same time so for that we're going to do exactly the same thing as what I did before um, but we have to recalculate the, this ID value because we shifted our boxes so uh, I have to go over here and now I have to make sure that that ID is correct again over here and now what I can do over here is I can say t plus equals and then I just do this whole thing again But instead of uh, because my like the uh, like the offset of the different columns of boxes it was just dependent on on the ID on the X component of the ID um, because every column every column gets offset by the same amount right every box in a column gets offset by the same amount uh, but the time but the timing is different for not just every row but also every column. So the difference here is that I'm going to have to add, let me make this number a little bit smaller here, and over here I'll add id.y as well, times some larger number, let's say. Okay, so now um, you see that they don't all go at the same time, but they do seem to go in waves, and the reason why is because this t value well, we're feeding this t value into a sign into a sign and a t value can only like over here it can only differ by one by one second um, uh, but if, if we can only differ by one second then uh, like the the entire phase of the sine wave is not one but it's it's two times pi which is six uh, or six point two eight or something like that so uh, we have to multiply this by the by the entire length of the phase. So I will multiply this by 2 pi, which is that. And now let's see. So now we should have a complete phase difference. So, and as you can see, it looks a lot more random now. All right. So if I take this out here, and you can see it looks nice and random. Now we can make this look more random. I'm, I'm going to stop here, but uh, just uh, just to give you some pointers of, of some stuff uh, where you can improve this. Um, uh, we can use a random number to make sure that not every drop is in the middle of the box, because right now all the drops are in the middle of the box, um, which uh, after a while you will you will see the, the you will notice that they're all in a row. Um, so so similar similar to how I use the random numbers to, to offset the columns and offset the timing. You can also offset where the drop is inside of the box on the left or on the right. Uh, another thing is that all the trail drops, they're all on a grid right now. They're all on the same, on the same height here. You see this one and this one and this one. So we would have to shift those as well. And actually, I think to do that, we can probably, we can probably just add it over here so what I can do let me just quickly add it and for noise and I'm just going to take this offset here add it over there okay so that shouldn't change anything and now over here I can probably and this is off the top of my head so maybe maybe I'm wrong but uh, you can probably add that same offset to the uv.y to to get those drops not all exactly at the same height uh, I think that worked. All right, so for the left, right, you can you can figure it out yourself. All right, so that's all great, but now we are computing an offset, right? So we want to like we want to know uh, for each UV how much offset it should be in in a certain direction, right? So uh, and right now we're computing just one color 
uh, meaning that both our x and our y component are the same. So right now our offset is not going to be multi-directional. It's just going to be in one direction. Um, so in order to get a proper offset, um, we have to do something else. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to um, use, I'm going to make the offset here. So let me see here where I am. Um, okay, so over here, let me make a vec2 and call it 01 for offset 1, because this is the offset that I want, actually, which is where I am in relation to, um, or where the UV is in relation to the, where the drop is. And so this is the same thing. This shouldn't change anything. Uh, but now I can use that 01. So let, 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 me, let me just get rid of the trail for a second. So I just have the drops themselves. I can multiply this by 01 now. Um, and now you can't see anything apart from the edge. Uh, but if I multiply this by some larger number, you will see that there, there are little drops in there now. Um, so if I get rid of the edge of the box, you can see that I have proper, I have proper offsets that I can use now. Um, so for every pixel, it, the offset is slightly different. It's pointing in a different direction. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. Let me just put those back for a second. I'm going to do the same thing for the other for the other one. So I'm going to do vec2 o, uh, o2 equals and then this entire thing here. Like that, and O2. I'm going to stick that over there. I don't need the extra brackets, but fuck it. So, and now I'm going to do M2 uh, times O2. And then I also have to multiply that by some number. I can I could do a different number, so I could have a more pronounced main drop or more pronounced um, trail drops. So now I have proper offsets that I can use to manipulate my my UVs. All right, so let's get rid of this and let's see here. So my main drop is a. I think my trail drops are too strong for my main drop. So. Anyway, so you can you can you can tweak this uh, all, all you want. All right, so now that we have this, now let's see what this does on uh, on the original image. Look at that. So now we have something that looks like drops. The only thing is, right now it looks more like drops of mercury that are reflecting. Uh, instead of refracting, right? If I look at this drop over here, the big light is over here, and, and on the outside of this drop, we have the big light ref uh, reflected. Uh, we want it on the other side, because if, if it was refracting, then it would show on the other side. <clears throat> well, that's simple. We can just, instead of plus rain distort, we could do minus rain distort. So now we have the refraction on the other side, and now we can play around with this a little bit. So. Um, we can say, okay, well, maybe this is too much. So I can, I could just multiply this by some smaller value to make the, the effect less pronounced. And I can add another, I can add another um, layer to this by just doing this and multiplying these UV coordinates. And by the way, let me just go back to rain here because in the beginning we multiplied the UV coordinates by three. I don't like that. Let's just take it out. So now my drops are getting bigger, but I'm going to go over here and <clears throat> uh, change that over here. So my first layer is my UV times five, and my second layer could be my UV times, like let's say seven. So you want to pick two numbers that that are not easily uh, where that are that don't have a common denominator, um, so that they don't they they don't um, when they tile, they don't fall on top of each other quickly. So let's see what this does. All right, so there you go. So there you have the rain. So now uh, we can make that even a little bit smaller over here, 0.5. And that starts is starting to look quite, quite all right. So now the last thing that I'm going to do is I want to um, add a little bit of wateriness to the to the um, uh, to the space in between the drops. And the way to do that is uh, like I showed in the beginning, we could just do uv.x 
equals no uh, plus equals the sine of the uv dot y times some larger value and then this whole thing times some smaller value so let's see what that does okay that's obviously way too much so make it smaller and and again this is just playing with va with values until you find something that looks that looks okay so maybe that is too little i can't see it anymore let's move that and now I'm, after that i'm going to do the same thing but with the coordinates flipped so that i have a distortion in both directions uh, and obviously with different numbers so let's say 170 and uh, let's see it gave me a tiny little bit difference so now you get like a nice watery looking effect so there you have it uh, let me put it full screen um, so now the full effect has like a, a few more small tweaks but I think I'll leave it I'll leave it like this um, I hope you were able to follow it I hope you liked it uh, and I would like to hear from you what you would like to see next. So uh, let me know in the comments below uh, what I can improve and what you would like to see next. And uh, either way, I will see you next time.